Welcome to the ProAdvisor Marketing Podcast, where creatives and nerds collide. Designed for today's bookkeepers, accountants, and tax pros, we are dedicated to helping you learn how to market your firm as we discuss the latest marketing strategies that are working right now. Whether you're just starting your firm or looking to maximize your marketing efforts, this podcast is for you, packed with insights on how firms can grow their brand and online presence. This podcast is hosted by Kristen Corey, a marketing expert in the accounting space and founder of ProAdvisor Marketing, and Eric Caceres, who co-founded a successful CPA firm and now helps others build the firm of their dreams through his company, ProAdvisor Brands. Please welcome your hosts, Kristen and Eric. Welcome to episode 15 of the ProAdvisor Marketing Podcast. I'm Kristen Corey. And I'm Eric Caceres. And today we are discussing why you need to ditch Facebook pages and create a group. This is something we're encouraging all of our clients to do over here at ProAdvisor Marketing, and we want to get you started on this so that before it becomes a common practice with every other firm out there. So let's dive in. I want to take a quick minute to tell you about our new Facebook group, The Meeting Room. We are constantly looking for new ways to connect with you and add value. So this group is designed for accountants, bookkeepers, and tax professionals who want to grow their business. We talk tech, marketing systems, processes, anything and everything that can help you grow your business. So if you want to join, be sure to check out our resources where it'll be linked. Okay, so episode 15, we're pretty far in. Uh, how are you things going over on your end, Eric? Let's do a quick check-in. Yeah, uh, we have, for those of you who don't know, I, I'm sure you wouldn't, uh, we've been traveling around in an RV for almost the past year. Um, and we decided to buy a house in Tucson, which is where my wife's family lives, like a lot of family. <laughs> and so we have uh, just come down here with the RV and our house is going to be finished being built in at the end of the month. So we've just kind of in this limbo phase where we're waiting to uh, we're all itching to get in there. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Yeah. How about you? Yeah. Well, it's funny. I had a, a conversation, a sales call the other day and they were asking, you know, how do you like working from home? And it's like we've always been remote and we have to be remote because everyone in our company is like constantly moving. Um, yeah, I, I mean, my, my husband's in the military and we are, if you're in, if you have a military background or, you know, any of you know what military life is like, um, it's hurry up and wait. And we are currently waiting <laughs> to figure out where we are going next. It is, it is the craziest thing to not know where you're gonna live in a year or like six months. Um, <laughs> yeah, just have boxes ready, <laughs> you know. Yeah, we um, definitely gain that mentality of like, I, I, I will let you know, like, I will know that this is happening when I'm on the plane is what it right? used to be like, because that, that used to be a, a kind of a deployment term is like, oh, when are you deploying in May? Oh, so you're really deploying in May? Well, not really. Like, I'll let you know when I'm on the yeah. plane, because it yeah. never, ever happens. You're, it's always some different date. It's like, even the week before, it'll change a month out. Yeah. yeah well, we, we heard about some friends. They were driving, driving to their next um, base where they were going to move. And on the drive there, they got a call saying, you're not going there. You're going to this area. And it's like, okay, like, <laughs> what about our stuff? It's on the moving truck. And yeah, I don't, I don't trust anything until I am actually in a house and our stuff is in it and we're all settled in. Um, yeah. It, it, <laughs> When I deployed, I deployed to Iraq for about 12, 13 months in 2008, and we, it, it, and I was in the infantry, so we had a lot of people. It, it, I mean, this was like thousands of people deploying at the same time, and yeah. it was, you know, it was traumatic. Everyone saying goodbye, and you know, every, you know, family members were all there, sending off their, you know, their kids to war, and and it's this whole thing, and so the family leaves, and we're all getting ready to go, and it gets canceled, and. I had I, my uh, my Rebecca was going to go and sp spend that year with her family. So like we had packed our stuff up and it was gone. So I had no clothes. I had no vehicle. I didn't oh have anything. On me. So I had to like borrow a friend's outfit 
who I <laughs> knew live by. And like, then I had to bring her back. She had to pick me up. And it was like, she had to relive yeah. the trauma again, you know, and two days later, it was like, I was in my head, I'm going like, you shouldn't have said anything. You should have just kept us here and not got, put our family through all that trauma. Again. Yeah. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. And a military family will hear that story and not blink an eye, but yeah, our yeah. families back home are like freaking out. Crazy, crazy stuff. Well, uh, since, you know, we're always moving, we are very big on online presence and having a great sort of uh, way to communicate and, and build your business no matter where you are. Um, so Facebook is obviously one of those great resources. And today we're talking about how to advertise your business on Facebook, but specifically the two sort of features, Facebook pages versus Facebook groups. Now, before we get into, you know, why you should ditch Facebook, pay or not necessarily ditch Facebook pages, but more lean into Facebook groups, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the history. So Facebook pages first came into being in 2007, and it was sort of advertised as a completely new way to advertise your business. Uh, but kind of looking back, we can see, okay, it's kind of the same thing as a Google business page, as Yelp, um, you know, uh, as Yellow Pages, all those sort of, you know, business advertising services where you have your services listed, you have your prices, you know, you maybe have a little bit of an about section, uh, your hours, that sort of thing. That's what Pages was built for, and it really has not changed that much since it first came into being. Um, in 2007. A year before that, in 2006, Facebook also introduced Facebook groups. And it never really occurred to people at the time to make a group for their business. Um, these groups were <clears throat> actually more designed for people that had similar interests. So a few examples are wiener dog owners or Corvette drivers or like all I've seen completely random ones that it's like USC alumni going through a divorce and, you know, completely strange groups. But the idea is that it's bringing people together that otherwise would not meet. And so that's really what groups was designed for, uh, to bring people together. They can post whatever they want. They can ask questions and they can kind of create their own little mini community online. Um, and since then, you know, groups has gotten a lot more, um, improvements, you know, as far as people being able to manage it, people finding, hey, I can use a group to, you know, for my local bingo group. Um, they're making it more kind of, hey, you need to be on Facebook because we communicate through a Facebook group. Um, and so that has started. And then something else that has recently become popular is businesses creating Facebook groups and then generating income through those Facebook groups. Yeah, and so and this kind of touches back to one of our previous episodes where we talked about, uh, I forget which one it was, but we we basically talked about, you know, how do you land your first client? Like, how do you get mm -hmm. in front of your customers? And you know, something that I've seen a lot in this industry is, you know, people not, I've seen this just a lot across the board with business owners is they they kind of stay within their comfort zone and they stay within their box and they'll go to industry events. So if I, you know, I'm a tile maker, I go to tile events or whatever. If I this, you know, and, and so what accountants do a lot is, you know, I use QuickBooks, so I go to QuickBooks events. That's great. Yeah. But your customers, I guarantee you, are not going there ever. And so this is one of those perfect situations where you can go where your customers are hanging out. And in that case, Facebook groups, you know, if your customer owns a plumbing business, there's probably a Facebook group for plumbers or a Facebook group for plumbers in your city. Mm -hmm. And and so instead of being solely focused on, you know, accounting and tax Facebook groups, which probably a lot of you are, let's think about who your customers are and let's get into their groups. Because at some point, like now, when it's almost tax or it is tax season, yep. people <laughs> in their groups are going to go, hey, is there any other plumbers out there that had to do taxes? This is my first year in my company. And like, I have no idea what I have to do. Boom. Then you yeah. can go, you're sitting there and you're going, hey, that's what I do. Hey, I serve plumbers in my city, the city that you're in, and let me let me you know here's some advice. Boom, 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 boom. Maybe we should schedule a call, and that's a perfect way to get your foot in the door with Facebook groups. And so you know, my advice is you know just look find Facebook groups where your customers are already hanging out, uh, and just start engaging. And on top of that, 
what you know what we're talking about here, Kristen, is is great advice. Is it there's like no barrier to entry to create a Facebook group. Yeah. You create it for free. You just create it and you just try stuff out. And so if you have some very specific niches like accounting for plumbers in wherever in Tucson, then make a Facebook group, accounting for plumbers in Tucson. And then just start talking about accounting for plumbers in Tucson. And when the the thought creeps up in their head, they might even search for it. You know, who does accounting for plumbers in Tucson? It'll show up, boom, there's actually a Facebook group for that and they can join yeah. and there you are to add value. And now you have created the hangout spot for your customers. It's genius. Yeah, yeah. I mean, where else really on the internet are there collections of your target audience where you can establish a presence, be a professional, um, and they're already all on that platform. You know, maybe there's like a, like continuing off your example, maybe there's like a plumbers community forum.com or something, but not everyone's on there. Not everyone's on Facebook. And so you can easily kind of grab those people that you otherwise wouldn't be able to reach. Um, and so if we compare Facebook groups to Facebook pages, when you post something on your page, the content has about a 6.4 organic reach. What does that mean? So when you're posting things on your page, you're probably trying to reach more people to sell, to uh, you know, grow your audience. And that 6.4 organic reach is kind of out of you know the 100 people, maybe six people will see it. Um, and maybe they will like it and maybe they'll follow your page. That's extremely low for the amount of work that you're putting into your Facebook page versus Facebook groups. Facebook's groups are being more prioritized in the algorithm, in the feed. You know, when you're scrolling through your feed, how does Facebook decide what shows up? It's with the algorithm. And so, you know, the number one thing that you're gonna see is posts from friends and family. The second thing is posts from groups that you are active in. And then the last is pages. And, you know, okay, you may say, okay, groups, it's just a little bit, you know, more, uh, I, I, what would you say, algorithm strength than uh, pages, but when mm -hmm. you consider how many groups people are in, how many friends they have, you know, how many pages they liked, you're gonna want all the help you can get. And so groups can be a great way to build interaction, show up in people's feeds on a regular basis and remind people, hey, I'm around, I still exist, without necessarily giving them a sales pitch with each post. Yeah, and, that, and it's a great way to establish um, the know, like, and trust factor. Mm -hmm. And so wh what that means is a lot of times mm -hmm. if someone's thinking, let's say, let's say I, I, I am, I'm a mechanic and I work at a mechanic shop and I've been doing this for five to 10 years and I have this thought in my head that I want to start my own shop. Like I want to, I want to own my own mechanic shop in my specific, whatever I do imports, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Well, before I actually open that business up, I'm probably going to be joining all the, the, I'm trying to find all the resources online. And so one of those is most likely going to be Facebook. And I'm going to go and find all of the mechanic shop resources I can possibly find to help me start this business and really prepare uh, to do that. So I'm not going in blind. And so I'm going to be on, you know, mechanic entrepreneurs, Facebook group and the mechanic in my state, Facebook group and mechanics in my city and mechanics that do this and mechanics that do that. I'm going to be in all these groups. And I'm just going to be asking questions. How do you guys do this, right? How do you mm -hmm. how do you start your own business? How do you uh, what what are, what are entities? What does that even mean? How do I do that? How do I do that? And they're going to be sitting there just like asking these questions. And so the impression I don't want to give is you know Facebook groups. With the, the way you shouldn't approach a Facebook group is going. If I talk to one person, they're going to become a client. Like that's yeah. that's not that's not how it works. You know they the, the Facebook groups allow you to build the know, like, and trust factor with your customers. So a lot of times what happens is you'll have these people on these groups asking questions and you go and you can answer them. Oh, hey, you know, you might be more interested in this type of entity type because of these reasons. You know, oh, there's a tax benefit uh, if you open up in this state versus this state. Oh, there's, you know, blah, blah, blah. You, you can use these platforms. If you're kind of getting, trying to figure out what systems to use, you know, there's, um, you can use Zero or QuickBooks Online for your online accounting. You know, there's all these things that you can just be adding value. But six months later, a year later, when they finally decide, I'm going to start my business now. I've got all the information I need. And then they get business and they start drumming up some customers and they realize, I need to work on more cars. I don't need to be doing my books because it's driving mm -hmm. me crazy because I have no idea what I'm doing. Who are they going to reach out to? The person that's been in the groups helping them along the way the whole time. 
I mean, think about it. Yeah. You've been helping them for six months to a year. You know what I mean? And they don't know any other accountants. It's not like they're accountants. And they're going to go, yeah. man, you know, Sherry in that Facebook group has just kind of like been my guidepost, right? She's just been like, yeah. like so helpful. And I think I'm ready. I think I want to hire her to take over my books so that I can focus more on my customers. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of a, a, you know, a template of really how you can use Facebook groups to your advantage. Yeah. I don't know why this popped into my head, but Sherry just seems like the nice sibling of the Karen, like the one that you want to hang out with. They're sharing. But basically, <laughs> yeah, you want to be the Sherry of Facebook. You want to, you know, be the helpful one, the one that's known for having all the answers on the topic of tax or the topic of bookkeeping. Uh, how pro advisor marketing and how we've kind of advertised ourselves in Facebook groups is, you know, we're in a bunch of accounting groups. If you're listening, that's probably how you found us. Um, but we, when we do it, I only comment about our business when people have a specific marketing question. I'll comment on other, you know, accounting posts where people have questions about applications or, you know, internships or things that I, you know, have an accounting background in. But when it comes to marketing and talking about pro advisor marketing, it's only when people are like, okay, how do I get my first client? How do I do this? Um, and I'll usually, you know, give them a short answer. Tell them I'm from a marketing firm where we only serve accountants and bookkeepers, and I'll provide them with a resource that directly links them to our website. So not only have I established myself as an expert, built credibility, given them like our you know punchline, which is basically, hey, marketing services just for accountants, I've also guided them to our website. And it's been really effective for us and really I've noticed that most people, most of our clients that come in or calls that are scheduled, it's not the person that I responded to. It's other people who were watching the comments and reading and trying to learn for this themselves. That's the bulk of people that have come uh, and found our company. You know, people have read our comments, found our information useful and helpful, um, and then wanted to reach out. Yeah. So, and, you know, something that I, th I don't know if you remember this, Kristen, but we actually uh, would provide a template. Um, to everyone in our company that if they start engaging with people on social media it's like use this template this almost as yeah. an outline of how to talk to people right mm -hmm. because what it's it's sometimes it's hard to think about it this way like you just want to be helpful you want to engage with people and you want them to like you and xxx but you also aren't there to just lollygag around right yeah. you do have a goal like you, you are being intentional for a reason and so the last thing you want to do is give a bunch of advice to a bunch of people for free and then nobody becomes customers, right? So at some point, there is a tactical approach to the way you're communicating on these groups and the way you're communicating on social media. And uh, so we had this template that was, um, you know, maybe it's something that, that we can uh, uh, share with the audience yeah. in the show notes. Uh, but it's, it's, it was, you know, you say this and then say this and then say this. And the, one of the things is, is once a conversation gets to a certain point, it's like, call me right or yeah. schedule an appointment or let me dm you you know i would see plenty of mistakes where people would be like here's some advice and if you want to you know if you want more just let me know and i'll dm you like well of course they want to know more they already asked the question just dm yeah. them just like dm them right away and say hey um i, I answered your question on the facebook group um, but I thought I would DM you and just, you know, just in case you missed it in the comments, um, this is what I, here's my advice. And um, if you would like to speak further, then, you know, here's a, a link to do so or whatever, you mm -hmm. know, that they like, try not to get caught in the social media, um, whatever the churn where it's just scroll, 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 scroll. Yeah. You got to have a goal. Like you've got stuff to do, right? You've yeah, got clients to serve. You've got a business to run. You've got employees to manage. You have stuff going on in your life. That's important. Don't, don't let Facebook become um, a waste of time, right? So I'm not saying go out there and be a salesman, you know, be one of those cheesy sales jerks, yeah. but yeah. like definitely have a goal in mind of, of not letting those prospects just disappear off into the wind to be someone else's client. So right. you gotta have a way to follow through with your conversation, right? And, and don't just let, don't leave it in their hands either. It's really one of the big things is don't, don't, let the busy business owner who's asking for advice just reach out to you. They won't. Yeah. They don't have time. And they probably won't even think about it. So just you be the one that reaches out to them. Hey, yeah. here's my advice. So like I said before, here's my advice. Boom, DM them. Here's the thing. Boom. Let's continue this conversation further. Yeah, 100%. 
Okay, that is all the time that we have for today. I'm going to wrap up with our three to-dos. Number one, create a Facebook book group with a purpose for your business. So if you're creating a Facebook group and you're an accountant and you don't serve accountants, you don't have any offerings or services to them, do not create a Facebook group for accountants. You know, if you want to serve service-based businesses or product-based businesses, call it product-based businesses, accounting tips, or, you know, something, whoever you're serving. Uh, the second point is to invite all those that liked your Facebook page to join your Facebook group. So as soon as you create the group, uh, problem number one, getting members. One way that we kind of found to get people that would probably be interested is to go to your Facebook page that you have likely been building for years and go through the, through the members list and send them each a message. It doesn't need to be long, doesn't need to be spammy. Basically, the, what you would say is, Thank you for liking our Facebook page. Uh, something else that you may be interested in is our Facebook group where we're continuing the conversation. You can find it here and then link it out. These are people that liked your business. They're probably going to like your Facebook group. It's not spam. You're just trying to expand your community for people that already said they like what you're doing. And the third thing is to schedule one week's worth of content in your Facebook group. So with Facebook groups, you can schedule content. Go on in, make content for the whole week, see how it goes. Other than that, that's all we have for you today, and we will see you next week. See ya. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our podcast. If you're getting value from us, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you are listening from. Also, feel free to share with your friends and follow us at facebook.com slash ProAdvisorMarketingUS. Now get out there and build your story, tell your story, and sell your story. See you next week.